India has developed ranjet-powered 155mm artillery shell technology. That means the shell keeps powering itself after being fired, instead of just flying like a normal shell. It works on the same basic principle as BrahMos, using incoming air to burn fuel, but it is much smaller, gun-fired, and not a missile. This allows artillery guns to hit targets much farther away than before, without using missiles. India is now testing it with the army, and if everything goes well, it would become the first country in the world to operationally deploy such shells. But why does India need a shell like this when alternatives are far cheaper and easier to mass-produce? The reasons are quite smart but first let us talk about normal artillery shells. 155mm artillery is the most common heavy artillery caliber used by modern militaries worldwide. Bigger calibers exist like 203mm, but they are heavy and logistically painful. The 155mm caliber hits the sweet spot between range, payload, mobility, and cost-effectiveness. In fact, this caliber has been one of the game-changing factors in the Russia-Ukraine war. Once Ukraine started receiving Western 155mm howitzers, those guns gave Ukrainian forces greater range, accuracy, and flexibility than many older systems on both sides. Even with drones, rockets, and precision weapons in play, conventional cannon artillery remains the backbone of ground combat in Ukraine, earning repeated descriptions from military leaders as the weapon that most visibly holds the line. They are so effective that intercepting individual shells with air defense systems is usually not worth the effort. So, why perfect an already perfected concept? There is a reason, and India is not trying to replace the 155mm shell in any way. Take a look at this comparison. A normal shell has an average range of around 30 kilometers. It is cheap and easy to produce in large numbers, but offers limited mission flexibility. A rocket-assisted projectile extends the range to a modest 45 km to 80 km, but is costlier than a normal shell. Guided rockets, like guided Panaka, have an impressive range of 90 to 120 km, but are very expensive to manufacture. Cruise missiles, such as BrahMos, are unmatched in range and precision, typically 300 to 800 km, but they are extremely expensive. This is where the ranjet artillery shell fits, right in the sweet spot between wrap shells and guided rockets, with an average range of 70 to 80 kilometers. Yes, it will be more expensive than wrap, but far cheaper than missiles. Beyond roughly 40 kilometers, the effectiveness of conventional artillery dropped sharply. For deeper strikes, armies traditionally needed rockets or missiles. A ranjet shell is not cheaper than artillery, it is cheaper than missiles pretending to be artillery. These shells fly longer and flatter, remain supersonic for longer, and arrive from unexpected ranges. This makes life far worse for the receiving end, and interception, even less practical. Ranjet shells shrink the mission space of rockets and missiles, but they do not eliminate them. Precision strikes, deep saturation attacks, and specialized warheads like cluster munitions will remain relevant. Against loitering strike drones, which are vulnerable to air defense and electronic warfare, ranjet shells can be highly effective because they are immune to electronic warfare, extremely difficult to intercept, effective in bad weather, free from data links or external guidance. However, they do not replace drones for reconnaissance, target identification, or hunting moving targets. The biggest advantage is that no new launcher or vehicle is required. The same 155mm guns can fire these shells at high speed and in large numbers. Short-range missiles remain just as important as long-range ones, but ranjet-powered artillery shells do not replace missiles across the board. They replace only a narrow class of battlefield missiles that historically existed mainly to compensate for artillery's range limitations, not for precision or strategic effect. For example, India's Prahar missile, with a range of over 150 kilometers, is a quick reaction battlefield weapon designed for precision strikes and heavier payloads. Ranjet artillery shells simply do not reach far enough to replace it. At the same time, 
it would make little doctrinal or economic sense for India to develop a new missile in the sub-100 km range, because ramjet artillery shells already cover that distance more cheaply and efficiently, without the added cost, logistics burden and vulnerability of road mobile missile launchers.